Hello and welcome to Synapse. This is Ritika. Today we'll talk about brachial plexus. We'll deal with the formation, the components and also the branches of the brachial plexus. At the end of the video, I'll also give you an easy way of drawing the brachial plexus. How is the brachial plexus formed? It is formed from the ventral primary rami of a few spinal nerves. First, we'll talk about what is ventral primary rami. Now, if this is a cross section of spinal cord, this is the dorsal root. This is the dorsal root ganglia. And this is the ventral root. A spinal nerve is formed by the fusion or a joining of the dorsal root and the ventral root. This is my spinal nerve, trunk of the spinal nerve. This later divides into dorsal rami and the ventral rami. This is ventral rami and this is dorsal rami. This is dorsal root, ventral root. What is the difference between root and rami? In rami, we have both sensory and motor fibers in each of the rami. That is, in dorsal rami, we have both sensory and motor fibers. In the ventral rami, we have both sensory and motor fibers. But when you're talking about the root, it either has sensory fibers or motor fibers that is the ventral root has motor fibers which is carried away from the cns dorsal root always has the sensory fibers which carry the impulses from peripheral region towards the cns now let's get back to the formation of the brachial plexus it is formed from the ventral primary rami of the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th cervical spinal nerves and the ventral primary rami of the 1st thoracic spinal nerve. All of these form the roots of the brachial plexus. Look at this diagram of dermatomes. Dermatome is basically the segment of skin which is supplied by one spinal nerve. This diagram shows us the uh, distribution of the dermatome on the anterior side of the body. Let's look at the uh, anterior wall of the trunk. What we can observe here is that the C4 or the C5 dermatome, C5 or the C4 dermatome is in direct contact with the T2 dermatome. Okay, T2 dermatome. Why is this? It's because the spinal nerves from C5 to T1 are drawn to form the brachial plexus and thus not seen on the anterior wall of the trunk and thus the C4 dermatome is almost in direct contact with the T2 dermatome. The ventral primary rami of C5 and C6 spinal nerves will join to form the upper trunk. Okay, this is the upper trunk. The ventral primary rami of C7 continues as the middle trunk. Ventral primary rami of C8 and T1 spinal nerves will join and form the lower trunk. Now each of the trunk will divide into anterior and posterior branches. That is anterior, posterior, anterior, posterior. And these are called divisions, anterior and posterior divisions. These are the roots, these are the trunks, these are the divisions. Okay. The posterior divisions, I have uh, darkened them just so you do not get confused. The anterior division of the upper and the middle trunks will join and form the lateral cord. Okay, these are the cords. The anterior division of the upper and the middle trunk joins to form the lateral cord. The anterior division of the lower trunk continues as the medial cord. The posterior divisions of all the three trunks together will form the posterior cord next comes the branches branches are not just coming from the cords but we have a few branches like very few branches coming from the trunks and there's few branches coming from the roots directly from the roots we have the long thoracic nerve which is formed from divisions coming from c5 
C6 and C7, right? C5, C6, C7 together will form the long thoracic nerve. which supplies the serratus anterior muscle. That is one important nerve coming directly from the roots. From the trunk, from the upper trunk, we have suprascapular nerve and nerve to subclavius. From the cords, let's look at the branches from the cords now. From lateral, it is simple. You have only three branches coming from lateral cord which includes lateral pectoral nerve, simple to remember, this is lateral pectoral nerve, lateral root of median nerve, this is median nerve. This is the lateral root and this is the medial root of median nerve. So lateral root of median nerve comes from the lateral cord and next is the musculocutaneous now, you know that this is the major uh, nerve of the anterior compartment of the arm and it pierces the coracobrachialis muscle. So from the lateral cord, the simple three branches, lateral pectoral nerve, lateral root of median nerve and musculocutaneous nerve. Now let's look at the medial cord. Everything starts with medial except for the ulna nerve. So you have four nerves starting with medial and there is one with U that is ulnar nerve. So what is this medial pectoral? In contrast to the lateral pectoral nerve, from the medial cord you have the medial pectoral nerve. Then you have the me medial cutaneous nerve of arm, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm, medial root of median nerve again in contrast to the lateral root of median nerve coming from the lateral cord. Next is the ulnar nerve. These are the branches of the medial cord. From the posterior cord, again you have five branches for which there is a simple uh, mnemonic ULTRA. U standing for upper scapular. The branches from the posterior cord, uh, there are again five branches from the posterior cord. There is a simple mnemonic for that ULTRA. U for upper subscapular, L for lower subscapular, T is for thoracodorsal nerve. And R is for radial nerve and A is for axillary nerve. Okay, ultra, upper subscapular, lower subscapular, thoracodorsal, radial nerve and axillary nerve. This topic at the first shot might look a little difficult, uh, but believe me, it's a very simple topic. Just listen to the review I'm going to give you now. Just listen properly. The formation of brachial plexus. It is formed from the ventral primary rami of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 spinal nerves. The ventral primary rami of C5 and C6 joins to form the upper trunk. The C7 primary rami, ventral primary rami continues as the middle trunk. The ventral primary rami of C8 and T1 forms the lower trunk. Each of the trunk divides into anterior and posterior divisions. The anterior division of the upper and the middle trunk will combine and form the lateral cord. The posterior divisions of all the three trunks forms the posterior cord. The anterior division of the lower trunk continues as the medial cord. The branches. Branches coming directly from the root mainly the long thoracic nerve with the root value of C5, C6, C7. The branches coming from the trunk includes the suprascapular and the nerve to subclavius, both starting with S. From the lateral cord, you have simple three nerves, that is lateral pectoral nerve, lateral root of median nerve and musculocutaneous nerve. From the posterior division, you have, up, you have ultra, upper subscapular, lower subscapular, thoracodorsal, radial and axillary nerves. From the medial cord, you have medial pectoral nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of arm, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm, medial root of median nerve and ulnar nerve. I hope it's become pretty simple by now. Before we wind this topic uh, with a simple way of drawing the brachial plexus, before that, there are two clinically important conditions related to brachial plexus damage, that is Erb's palsy and Klumke's palsy. 
So let's discuss about what kind of injury causes this kind of palsy and what are the features of each of this. Now let's talk about the herbs palsy. It is basically damage to the upper trunk at the herbs point. What is herbs point? This is the herbs point where there are six nerves meeting. Right? There are two roots meeting, two divisions, right? And two branches. There are six nerves meeting at this point and that point is called the herbs point. Damage at this point causes herbs palsy. Let's look at how this damage can occur. Damage to the upper trunk can be caused by falling on the shoulder as shown in this picture. Basically, there is increased separation of the shoulder and the head as, as in this diagram. This causes damage at the herbs point. Also could be birth damage, that is damage to the child during birth. Okay, now let's look at the deformity in herbs paralysis. Okay, if you look at this diagram properly, the arm is medially rotated and the arm is adducted. The elbow is extended and the forearm is pronated and the wrist is flexed. This kind of a deformity is called policeman tip hand deformity or waiter's tip hand deformity. <clears throat> now let's look at why this deformity is occurring. Why is the arm adducted? Because deltoid which is the abductor of the arm is paralyzed. Thus adduction is caused. The, the arm is medially rotated because supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor which are necessary for the opposite action that is for lateral rotation even those muscles are paralyzed. Thus the arm is medially rotated. The forearm is extended and pronated because biceps brachii muscle is paralyzed. And also there is loss of sensation on the outer aspect that is lateral aspect of the um. Now let's look at clump case paralysis which is another clinically important uh, condition of damage to brachial plexus. In this the lower trunk of the brachial plexus is uh, damaged and this is because of hyper abduction of the arm as seen in, in this diagram. Could be because of sudden hanging by one hand or could be during childbirth when the baby is pulled by one hand. The deformity seen in clump case paralysis is called the claw hand deformity where there is extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion at the interphalangeal joint. This is because of paralysis of the flexors of the wrist and fingers and also paralysis of the intrinsic muscles of the hand. Along with this there is also a loss of sensation along the medial border of the um, Horner's syndrome could be one of the features of clump case paralysis if the T1 root is involved. This is because there is sympathetic outflow from the T1 which goes to the head and neck region. Now if there is damage to that sympathetic outflow then Horner's syndrome will be one of the features of clump case paralysis. What do you see in Horner's syndrome? Here in this picture the person's left side is affected. You can see that there is ptosis, there is, there is drooping of the eyelid, there is anhydrosis which you may not be able to observe in this picture but basically there is decreased tear secretion and there is enophthalmos that is backward displacement of the eyeball. Grab a paper and a pen and draw this with me. This is simple. This is C5, C6. C7, C8 and T1. These are the ventral primary rami of these spinal nerves. Join C5 and C6 and you're getting the upper trunk. Label this uh, on your own. And C7 continues as the middle trunk. C8 and T1 joins to form the lower trunk. Now each trunk gives anterior and posterior divisions, right? Anterior division of upper trunk, anterior division of medial trunk forms the lateral cord. The posterior divisions of all the three trunks form the posterior 
called the anterior division of the lower trunk continues as the medial cord now from the lateral cord you have some branches right there is lateral pectoral nerve musculocutaneous nerve lateral root of median nerve okay this is median nerve this is lateral root of median nerve so the three things three branches we have done from the posterior cord continues you draw two things that is one of it is radial nerve one of it is axillary nerve and there are three more branches that is lower subscapular upper subscapular and thoracodorsal nerves from the medial cord you have medial pectoral nerve medial cutaneous nerve of arm medial cutaneous nerve of forearm medial root of median nerve ulnar nerve very simple just label it properly and it's a very simple concept finally add in the two branches coming from the upper trunk and the long thoracic nerve